it's not always extremely trivial to find uh, equilibrium points for systems of differential equations, in particular when those differential equations are nonlinear. Uh, that's the key here. So when they are linear, it's pretty evident that what we can usually do is some sort of matrix reduction, reduced row echelon form for those who are familiar with linear algebra. But uh, not, all lin non not all systems are completely trivial to be solved. For instance, let's consider this nonlinear system, which is actually uh, could be a, quite a common system. Most systems do not behave, at least differential equations, do not behave linearly. And uh, here is one example. So uh, we recall that any equilibrium, or excuse me, any equilibrium point is any point that makes all rates zero. And the key here is not just makes all rates zero, but makes them zero simultaneously. So that is also very important to us. So I'll write simultaneously, meaning that it's not good enough just to make one of the rates zero while the other is some non-zero value. We want to make them all zero. So in this case, we want to solve the, uh, where dx dt is zero. Well, if dx dt, we replace this with zero, uh, then we have x times x minus y minus x. Similarly, for dy dt, we set it equal to zero, and we have 3y times 1 minus x plus y over x. Now, it's up, it's up to us to decide which equation we want to solve. And oftentimes, these systems have multiple equilibrium points. So I'm going to go with the first equation because it's going to be much easier for me to um, solve for x. And uh, some of this is just algebraic strategy. So in this case, what I can uh, do is factor out an x from both terms and turn this into um, x minus y uh, minus 1. And that gives me, uh, if I remove the uh, parentheses there in the middle, because I don't really need to have that, I have x times x minus y minus 1. So this system will be, this differential equation will be 0 when either x equals 0. Okay, so uh, when we're dealing with population, it's a pretty common. If you don't, don't have a population size to begin with, you're not going to have any population change. And similarly here, we have x minus y minus 1 equals 0. Now, this is an equation uh, that actually requires some work. So I can decide which variable I want to isolate here. Just I'm focusing on x. I'm going to isolate x. So if x is equal to y plus 1 or x minus y minus 1 is 0, this differential equation will also have a 0 rate of change. Now, it's not good enough, we said. These are two uh, possible equilibrium points, but these aren't really points. These are just single values of x that will make the first differential equation 0. So for the second equation, now we need to determine if x equals 0, what does y need to be in order for this to happen? Well, uh, so in this case, we have, if we plug in for x equals 0, oh, in other words, now we're going to figure out, well, what corresponding y would be required in order to uh, solve this equation. Well, we have 0 equals 3y times 1 minus 0, since x is 0, plus y over 0. But already we see a problem. We have a, a divide by 0 error here. And so there is no uh, the value of y that will make this differential equation is 0 if x is 0, because x cannot be 0 um, in this system. So uh, we scratch that. Now, if, if it were possible, if this were, for example, x over y, then this term would just be 0, and then we could uh, proceed to solve for y as uh, we tried. OK, so now I need to also test this system. OK, so I know that the first equation will be 0 if x is equal to y plus 1. So that means that 0 is equal to 3y times 1 minus x, well, x is y plus 1, and uh, plus y over x, which is, again, y plus 1. So now I have to do some reduction, and I see that I get 3y times 1 minus y minus 1, uh, plus y over y plus 1. All right, well, this leads me to... Uh, if I distribute, well, actually, I can cancel out a 1 and a negative 1 here, and then I'll have 3y times y, which is, uh, so I have 0 equals 3y squared plus y over y plus 1. Okay, well, uh, it might be 
obvious at this point that one of the solutions or one of the values of y that will work here is y equals zero because if y is zero, this first term will be zero and the second term will be zero. Um, moreover, what I could even do here is, okay, so I need to solve this. I see that it's a quadratic. Now I know that y plus one cannot be zero, so y cannot be negative one here. Um, and I need to keep that in mind if I'm going to do something like multiply both, both sides through by y plus 1. But actually what I'm going to decide to do here, and I'll start back up here, is I am going to factor out a y from both terms. And um, I'll have 3y plus 1 over y plus 1. Okay, well there it is. There's the uh, y equals 0 value that will, that will work. And that doesn't cause any problems anywhere throughout the equation because I won't be dividing by 0. I'll have 0 plus 1 in the denominator, which is fine. Um, or it could be the case that 3y plus 1 over y plus 1 equals 0. So uh, let's just point out here, um, we observed that y cannot be negative 1. And so if we do accidentally get y equals negative 1, we'll We'll have, to, we'll have to deal with that. Okay, so now I'm actually going to go ahead and multiply through by y plus 1. Multiply both sides by it. So I'll have y plus 1 times 3y. And if I multiply 1 over y plus 1 by y plus 1, I'll just have 1, because the y plus 1s will cancel. And I'll have that equal 0. All right, I'm going to move over to this side. I didn't realize that I would, have, I would require this much space. And um, now I have, a, a, well, I can't really do much here because this is not, all multiplied together, so I am going to redistribute again, and I'll have 3y squared plus 3y plus 1 equals 0. And then you can see that this is quite non-trivial. In other words, now we have to solve a quadratic to figure out any values of y that will make that second component 0. Um, so there's one solution. So when x, if x is equal to y plus 1, uh, y has to be 0, and if y is 0, that means x has to be 1. So it's kind of like uh, we have to keep in mind that this is the guy that gave us this guy. And to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 3, just so I have y squared plus y plus 1 third equals 0. And now using quadratic formula or um, using a calculator, I would have the value of y that satisfies this is negative b, which is 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac which is 4 times 1 times 1 third. And that's all over 2a. And now a is 1, so I have 2 times 1. And um, so I, if I continue reducing this, I'll have negative 1 plus or minus. Now under the radical, um, if I get a negative, I know that there will, there will be no real y that will work. So um, that will tell me that the second term can never be 0. And let's see what happens. So we get uh, 1 minus 4 thirds which is 1 minus, well, th 1 is 3 thirds, 4 thirds. It's going to leave me with a negative 1 third in the denominator all over 2. And uh, there is no real solution. Y is not real. Okay. What did we figure out? Well, when X is 0, there is no corresponding uh, solution to the second equation. In other words, although X equals 0 makes the first rate of change equal to 0, it does not in any way possibly mathematically allow us to make the second equation 0 because simply x cannot be 0. Then we decided, okay, well the other possibility for the first equation is if x equals y plus 1, then that means this component here in the parentheses will cancel um, to 0 and will leave us with a 0 in there. And then we said, okay, well if that value of x works for the first equation, let's go to the second equation here and solve that given that x is equal to y plus 1. And we did all this algebra here and found out that that's the same thing as solving 0 equals 3y squared plus y over y plus 1. And then we um, did some factoring so that we could immediately obtain a solution, y equals 0, or 3y plus 1 over y plus 1 equals 0. And uh, so then we solved this component, which led us to a quadratic. And the quadratic led to a negative under the radical, which said, hey, you know what? The second factor cannot be 0 if x is equal to y plus 1. So what solution do we end up with? Well, we ended up with this one here, right there. And that corresponded to this solution. So that was our only equilibrium point. Now, you can see how we could have ended up with more, quite possibly, if uh, there had not been these issues of having y over x and similarly if the, the square root here were not negative. Okay, so I'm going to move to the next page and um, 
We now know that y is equal to zero. Or excuse me, that uh, at, I'm going to change my to a pen here. So we know that if x is equal to whoa, sorry about that, folks. So we know that if oh boy, this is more trouble than I thought it would be. Okay. So uh, the solution that we found is x equals y plus 1 led to uh, the second equation giving us the corresponding y value of y is equal to 0. Okay, well that's the only equilibrium point. And because x and y are the same values in each equation, that means that if y is 0, this further simplifies down to x, is ha x has to be 0 plus 1 and y has to be 0. And so that means x is equal to 1 and y equals 0. So we get the equilibrium point, just 1, and the equilibrium point is x comma y equals 1 and 0. So if it's a population model, we would say if, if the x popula population of x has a size of 1 and the population of, si of y has a size 0, then um, there's equilibrium. In other words, y will not change obviously, because if it's a population, you can't um, get something from nothing, and then x won't change, x will be essentially in a stable state. Um, so that's just a, kind of a strategy or a tip or just an example of how we could solve these. So just take caution that you're using logic whenever you are solving these and, and you don't get mixed up as to what you're doing.